These days, governments seem to be getting their orders from either corporate lobbyists or unaccountable and unelected international organizations, not from their citizens. The United Nations appears to be one of the most influential of these organizations, and it recently released a plan for a, quote, global digital compact that governments will soon agree to. So today, I'm going to summarize these digitization plans, tell you exactly when governments could agree to implement them, when they're supposed to be finalized, What's noteworthy is that it was apparently put together by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Antonio confirmed that the WEF and its affiliates have been forcing the UN's Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, using the Environmental, Social and Governance, or ESG, investment trend. In other words, the WEF is effectively the private sector arm of the UN. Now, the good news is that the private sector isn't too keen to play ball with the UN these days, as per Antonio's admission. The bad news is that the public sector is still very much on board, and Antonio instructed the politicians at the WEF to ignore the opinions of their populations when implementing the UN's policies. Seriously. Now, the fact that the public sector is still on board means that some of the UN's policies could still be implemented. If you want a sense of what these policies will look like, consider that the UN recently took over the EU's pandemic passport to develop what is essentially going to be a global digital ID. The continued influence of the UN in the public sector is why it's prudent to summarize its recent report. It's necessary to know what they're planning and when they want to implement it if you want to sidestep or even stop it. So, without further ado, let's dig in. The report begins with a brief introduction, apparently written by Antonio himself. In the first few sentences, he reveals that the proposals in this report are expected to be approved and adopted by global governments at the Summit of the Future in September 2024. Mark your calendars. Antonio also reveals that he is the one behind the broader UN initiative that this report is related to. We find that very hard to believe given the detail and scope of these initiatives and reports. It's more than likely that Antonio is being advised by someone and it's possible he's not writing these reports at all. Anyway, speculation aside, Antonio underscores the fact that all the policies in this report are intended to help achieve the UN's SDGs. For context, the SDGs are a set of 17 milestones that every country is supposed to meet by 2030. The SDGs appear to be the origin of things like digital IDs, CBDCs, and that 2030 date you see everywhere. Antonio goes on to explain that these policies can only be achieved with the help of so-called called stakeholders, a word that effectively refers to the world's most powerful individuals and institutions. Note that private sector stakeholders want profits and public sector stakeholders want control. This is why both parties are obsessed with digitization. Plugging everyone into the system increases profits and makes it easier to control them. Antonio laments the fact that some people aren't as plugged in as others and seems to imply that this is the reason why inequality is growing around the world. Some would say that the real reason in equality is growing is because central banks and governments are lining their pockets and the pockets of their cronies using money that's been printed or taken from the average person via taxation. But that's a topic for another time. Antonio also laments the fact that new and innovative technologies such as AI and crypto are not being sufficiently governed, that is, controlled. He seems to applaud the digitization that resulted from the pandemic and seems to imply that this is the direction the world should go in. Antonio ends the introduction by saying that a, quote, global digital compact is necessary to, quote, achieve the governance required for a sustainable digital future. Governance means control. And you'll also notice that Antonio threw the word sustainable in there out of nowhere. This could be a subtle reference to the individual carbon credit score system the UN is trying to set up. Now, the first part of the report is about what's required for global digital cooperation. Antonio, or whoever wrote this, explains that it requires having a set of shared goals. Antonio then stresses that we must fully digitize the remaining 2.7 billion people ASAP. Incredibly, he seems to acknowledge that not everyone wants to be a part of this system. He says that a, quote, demand pull is also needed and that this is where the public sector can play a role. He explains that they can do this by making things like digital ID 
mandatory to access public health services. Antonio includes, quote, schools and cultural services in this list, which begs the question of whether you'll eventually need to show a digital ID to get an education or practice your religion. Knowing Antonio, the answer is probably yes. At least this digital prison will be sustainable, renewable, green, etc. Jokes aside, Antonio calls on both the public and private sector to make all their data accessible so that the UN can keep track of how close countries are to meeting the SDGs. He admits that the UN has had a hard time assessing whether countries have achieved 41% of the SDGs in accordance with the 2030 date. He then pivots to a topic that he's been passionate about on Twitter lately, and that is online safety, aka censorship. He says that, quote, open, safe, and secure use of the internet is slipping away from us, potentially permanently. Obviously, he blames this on disinformation, hate speech, and the like. He acknowledges that some countries have taken steps to censor the internet. He says that this isn't enough. He says that governments need to get more involved, both online and in the real world, and that they should crack down speech. He also says that the, quote, global nature and infrastructure of the internet needs to be protected. This is reminiscent of something Antonio said in his speech at the WEF, and that's that he fears that the internet is splitting in two, a censored internet in the West and a censored internet in the East. Regarding AI, meanwhile, Antonio says that the rapid advancement of technology is making governance, aka control, very hard for the UN and its affiliates, and that AI has put this on full display. Naturally, Antonio is upset that AI is making it possible to generate so much content. Imagine the disinformation, he says. To his credit, Antonio acknowledges that AI can be beneficial, but only if it is sufficiently controlled. He reveals that the UN has already been working with AI experts to assess how it can be controlled and how to make sure that it can always be shut down, probably needed if it ever starts telling the truth. And last but not least, Antonio says that the, quote, arc of innovation needs to be bent towards solving societal problems and global challenges. Translation, AI needs to be used to manage the peasants. He basically says that digitization should be addressed in a manner similar to the climate crisis. This is quite concerning as it implies lots of regulation, intervention, and restriction of the internet. It would be crazy if they swapped out the climate crisis with some sort of AI-driven digitization crisis. He hints that this will require, quote, new governance arrangements. In other words, more shadowy organizations. Yay. Antonio then lists the objectives of the Global Digital Compact and the actions that stakeholders should take to ensure these objectives are met. The first objective is to plug everyone into the matrix, and Antonio provides a long list of actions, including subsidies and $100 billion of funding to this end. This ties into the second objective, and that's to invest heavily in digitization and to, quote, develop environmental sustainability by design and globally harmonize digital sustainability standards and safeguards to protect the planet. A word salad that sounds like total control of digital technologies. The actions Antonio recommends include money, money, and more money. They also include sharing data so that the UN can finally start tracking how far along countries are in meeting the SDGs. For reference, there's only seven years left. It's safe to say that it's not looking good. Now, the third objective is to end the, quote, gender digital divide and to ensure that labor rights are adhered to online. Like all fuzzy sounding objectives, the actions required to meet them include some seriously dystopian stuff, including the creation of a dedicated UN government body in every country. Watch out for those. The fourth objective is to ensure the internet remains open, secure, and shared. The actions Antonio prescribed include avoiding internet shutdowns to, say, manage dissent or opposition. What's funny is that Antonio suggests that governments use, quote, targeted measures instead. This relates to the fifth objective, which is to address disinformation, hate speech, and the like, to develop, quote, trust labels and certification schemes, and to ensure that gender is included as a part of every digital policy to ensure absolute equality. Antonio proposes a long list of actions here, the most important of which is to establish a global code of conduct to ensure that the internet is policed properly in every corner of the planet. After all, if there's some place where free speech still exists, opposition to the UN and its allies could start to spread. Can't have that, can we? Anyhow, the sixth objective is to ensure adequate data governance 
events, i.e. control. Actions include ensuring that all data is interoperable, because nothing says privacy like sharing your most sensitive data with every corporation, government and organization on the face of the earth. The seventh objective is to ensure adequate control of AI. Actions include, quote, urgently launching a global body that will regulate all of the AI in existence and any new AI that emerges. Antonio must have mentioned the UN half a dozen times in this section. Sounds like they bought into the AI boom. Now the final objective is to ensure all the other objectives are met in accordance with the UN's SDGs. Gotta say God bless you.